Are you ready to take control of your financial future? The leading collection accounts is not just about erasing debt. It's about reclaiming your financial freedom. Join us on a journey to financial empowerment, where we'll show you how to challenge and remove those negative marks from your credit report. Get ready to transform your financial landscape and unlock opportunities you never thought possible. Don't let your past define your financial present. It's time to rewrite your financial story and pave the way for new opportunities. Let's delete those collection accounts and unlock the doors to financial success together. Hi there. Today, what we will talk about is one of the ways you can delete items off your credit report, particularly collections by using consumer law. Hey, did you pay that collection or that debt collector? I know you did. Just don't do it again. Today I'm going to show you why you don't have to pay. Did you know there is a law that says you don't have to pay? debt collectors? For the next 50 minutes or so, we're going to unpack this information and you will see that there are laws protecting you. So just sit back, relax, and follow along. All right. So before we get to the debt validation letter, I will show you how to look up or Google the laws for yourself. I use Cornell Law. They have took the time and placed all the consumer laws on the internet. So here we are at Cornell Law School. We have what we refer to as U.S. Codes. This is Title 15. This is Chapter 41 and we're in Subchapter 5. So what we have right here is what exactly is subchapter five? So let's go back to, there we are. This is subchapter five. That's what it says right here. 15 USC subchapter five, debt collection practices. And this is what's known as the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act or FDCPA, and it is comprised of various laws. Uh, the little symbol that we have to the side is called section. So we have section 1692A all the way to section 1692P. And what you'll see in blue is what's called uh, Congressional Findings and Declaration of Purpose. So according to this, A, abusive practices, there is abundant evidence of the use of abusive, deceptive, and unfair debt collection practices by many debt collectors. Abusive debt collection practices contribute to the number of personal bankruptcies, to marriage marriage instability, to the loss of jobs, and to invasions of individual privacy. So a note here is this is key, especially individual privacy, because according to consumer law, you are a consumer and must have privacy. So let's continue. What we have highlighted here in yellow is uh, going to be uh, for every letter that you sent out. All dispute letters are sent out by certified mail green return signature receipt so you can track the date of the receipt also go to your bank or pay for them and get them all notarized it doesn't matter where you get them notarized your uh the person that is notarizing the letter 
will also be used as a witness to prove that you sent this letter. So now, let's go to the letter. I refuse to pay this alleged collection. Where the hell did this collection come from? So you're going to skip a space and then you're going to go down. Next um, thing you're going to see is uh, your name, address, city, state, and zip. That's what you're going to place there. Make a skip, skip a space, and then the next line is for today's date. Whatever the date is that you're sending this letter out. You're going to skip a uh, space. Then the next line starts with the name of the collection agency, their address, city, state and zip. So what's highlighted here in yellow notice the principal is notice the agent. Notice the agent is notice the principal. What this mean is means is that when you send the letter to an agent, any debt collecting company, Whoever signs for the letter, whether it's the janitor, the security guard, the, uh, the secretary, we don't care. It, it is as good as if the CEO of that company signed for the letter. Let me enlarge this. So next we'll see is that this is not an attempt for verification. The reason why we put this here is that normally when people send letters to the debt collector, the debt collectors will send back a letter stating that your account is verified. We're not asking if the account is verified. What we're letting them know is that they're violating the law. And we're going to show them how they're violating the law. So as we read in the letter, to whom it may concern. This notice is to inform you that you have unlawfully reported an alleged debt to my consumer report under the new regulation F rule, which took effect November 30th, 2021. So if a debt collector has placed or parked a collection notice on your consumer report after this date without following regulation F, that is a violation and you can get paid for that. So let's go see what regulation F is. So as you can see, this is the CFPB or the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And we're looking at one of the laws that they've put into practice. It's called 12 CFR part 1006 Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. This is Regulation F. So as you can see, this was adopted or amended November 30th, 2021. So it says Regulation F implements the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, FDCPA, prescribing federal rules governing the activities of debt collectors as that term is defined in the FDCPA. So we're learning and understanding that these are federal rules, federal laws, and Regulation F governs how a debt collector is to collect. So as you can see, moving down, The debt is to be collected includes uh, the regulation covers topics such as communications in connection with debt collection, prohibitions on certain conduct in connection with debt collection, validation information, time barred debt, time barred debt, debt disputes, state exemption programs, record extension. You can Google this for yourself and go deeper into the law to further understand what they're doing. So next, 
You have violated the FDCPA section 1006.30A and its new rule by parking this alleged debt on my consumer report. Cease and desist the reporting of this alleged debt immediately or I will escalate this matter and take legal action. I have not given you written permission to put anything on my credit profile, 15 U.S.C. 1681B2. So let's go and Google this and see what this is about. Uh, but before we go there, let's look up FDCPA section 100630A. Ah, other prohibited practices. So again, we go to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB. We expand it, and here we are. 1006.30. And we want to go to Section A. And here it is, Section A. Required actions prior to furnishing information. One, in general, except as provided in paragraph A2 of this section, a debt collector must not furnish to a consumer reporting agency as defined in section 603F of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, 15 U.S.C. 1681 AF, information about a debt before the debt collector does what? They can't put this on your consumer report before they speak to the consumer about the debt in person or by telephone. That's number one. Number two, places a letter in the mail or sends an electronic message to the consumer about the debt and waits a reasonable period of time to receive a notice of undeliverability. During the reasonable period, the debt collector must permit receipt of and monitor for notifications of undeliverability from communications provided. If the debt collector receives such a notification during a reasonable period, the debt collector must not furnish information about the debt to a consumer reporting agency until the debt collector otherwise satisfies paragraph A1. So here are the rules for a debt collector. One, they have to talk to you, either by phone or in person. And two, they need to place a letter, well, or two, they need to place a letter in the mail. And if the letter is not delivered, then they cannot place this on your consumer report. They have to prove that they have follow this rule. And if they haven't, you can get paid for it. Two. Special rule. Information furnished to certain specialty consumer reporting agencies. Paragraph A1 of this section does not apply to a debt collector furnishing of information about a debt to a nationwide specialty consumer reporting agency that compiles and maintains information on a consumer's check writing history as described in section 603X3 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, 15 U.S.C. 1681AX3. So we don't need that. It's all been covered. So let's go to the next point. So we're gonna go to 15 U.S.C. 1681B2.
permissible purpose. Fifteen USC Section sixteen eighty one B permissible purpose of consumer reports. A. In general, subject to subsection C, any consumer reporting agency may furnish a consumer report under the following circumstances and no other. So we drop down to part two in accordance with the written instructions of the consumer to whom it relates. So here it is in federal law. In order for them to put something on your consumer report, they have to have permission. That's what permissible purpose means. They have to have something in writing. It can be electronic or it can be handwritten, but they have to have something in writing that is an agreement that the consumer has given them permission to do so. So please follow these laws. If not, this can graduate into aggravated identity theft. That's another issue, but we'll deal with what we have here. You have no permissible purpose by law to contact third parties with my private or personal information. Your offenses amount to aggravated identity theft pursuant to 18 U.S.C. section 1028A. You have knowingly transferred, possessed, or used without lawful authority a means of identification of me, which is a felony. So, let's go and see what this 18 U.S.C. 1021 1028A is. Aggravated identity theft. Letter A, offense. In general, whoever during and in relation to any felony violation enumerated in Section C, knowingly transfers, possesses, or uses without lawful authority a means of identification of another person shall in addition to the punishment provided for such felony be sentenced to a term of imprisonment of two years. This is what I call a hammer. You have the federal law here, 18 U.S.C. Section 1028A, Aggravated Identity Theft. And this is punishable up to two years of imprisonment. So debt collectors, uh, they get very serious when you talk about uh, jail time. But let's continue with the letter. I am a litigious consumer will not hesitate to take legal action against the collection company's name. You got to put it there. So let's look up what litigious means. So we need to know everything, what, what the definition is when we're writing these letters. We need to be very thorough and uh, understand what we're saying to them. So we're going to Google this. This is a basic way of finding out definitions. And right here it's saying unreasonably prone to go to law to settle disputes. So you're letting them know you don't have any problems with taking them to court. And it's not worth it. Unless you owe hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, they're not going to risk anything of that nature. So let's continue. 
Next, we're talking about 15 U.S.C. Section 1692 CC, Ceasing Communication. Now, this is very important. Watch what this says. Communications in connection with debt collection. A. Communication with the consumer generally without the prior consent of the consumer given directly to the debt collector or the express permission of a court competent jurisdiction. A debt collector may not communicate with a consumer in connection with the collection of any debt. So here you see that they're not allowed to communicate with you. And it says right here, unless they have a court order, this is why you have to make sure you check your mail. This is coming from a, 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 a local municipality, city, state, county, federal, that's talking about, uh, you know, to trying to communicate with you, you need to uh, open it up and read it to make sure you're not going to court. You need to get in front of these debt collectors, letting them know that there are certain rules that they have to follow. If they haven't followed these rules, we're going to take them to court because we're litigious. Now, let's continue. If a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay a debt or that the consumer wishes the debt collector to cease further communication with the consumer, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt. I refuse to pay this alleged debt. Cease and desist all collection activities regarding this alleged debt and promptly delete it from all consumer reporting agencies that you have reported this inaccurate, incomplete, erroneous, and misleading information to at once. So, we have already seen that they can't communicate with you once you send them this cease and desist letter. This is the statement that makes this letter a cease and desist letter. And this law right here, 15 U.S.C. section 1692 C, and we're gonna go to C, ceasing communication. If a, commu a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay a debt or that the consumer wishes the debt collector to cease further communication with the consumer, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt. So this is where the law says, if you refuse to pay the debt, you can refuse a debt collector. This is law. Again, 15 U.S.C., Section 1692C, C. Ceasing communication, cease and desist. Let's continue. The reporting of such inaccurate information has caused severe damage to my character, my reputation, my general mode of living, and my ability to obtain credit for personal and house purposes. You and your inaccurate reporting have damaged my livelihood. 15 U.S.C. Section 1681 S2. Responsibilities of Furnitures of Information to Consumer Reporting Agency. So let's Google this law and see what this says.
そうですね15 U.S.C. Section 1681 S. 2. Responsibilities of Furnitures of Information to Consumer Reporting Agency. A. Duty of Furnishings of Information to Provide Accurate Information. 1. Prohibition. Reporting information with actual knowledge of error. A person shall not furnish any information relating to a consumer. Any consumer reporting agency, if the person knows or has reasonable cause to believe that the information is inaccurate. B. Reporting information after notice and confirming or confirmation of error. A person shall not furnish information relating to a consumer to any consumer reporting agency if one the person has been notified by the consumer. At the address specified by the person for such notices, that specific information is inaccurate, and two, the information is in fact inaccurate. So this letter is putting them on notice that if you proceed further, you're going to violate the law of 15 U.S.C. Section 1681 S. 2, the responsibility of furnishers of information to consumer reporting agencies. We've reported it to you. You are aware of it. The letter that we sent you was notarized. It was certified to make sure we knew exactly when you received it. We have a witness that's、um, documented who we are and what the content of the letter is. And if you want to go further and continue to have this on my consumer report, then you're going to have to face severe consequences. This is inaccurate information. We didn't even follow regu the regulation. So let's go forward. Fifteen U.S.C. Oh, you are prohibited by law. To furnish inaccurate information, 15 U.S.C. 1681 S. 2 A. 1 A. So let's look at this. Gonna highlight this. So here we are. Fifteen U.S.C. Section sixteen eighty one S two, responsibilities of furnishers of information to consumer reporting agencies. A. Duty of furnishers of information to provide accurate information. One. Prohibition. A. Reporting information with actual knowledge of error. So this is the consequences, or this is letting them, the debt collectors know. If you're going to continue to report this on my consumer report, and I've already put you on notice that you have errors, that there's something wrong, this is where I get paid as the consumer. A person shall not furnish any information relating to a consumer to any consumer reporting agency. If the person knows or has reasonable cause to believe that the information is inaccurate, now let's go down to oh, we already have done that on A, and there should be no doubt that they know better than to continue to do this. Let's continue. 15 U.S.C. 
section 1681 S2. A. Duty of furnitures of information to provide accurate information. 1. Prohibition. A. Reporting information with actual knowledge of error. A person shall not furnish any information related to a consumer to any consumer reporting agency if the person knows or has reasonable cause to believe that the information is inaccurate. But what does accurate mean? Correct in all details, exact. Prohibition, what does prohibition mean? A law or regulation forbidding something. And you can Google this and look it up. B, reporting information after notice and confirmation of error. A person shall not furnish information relating to a consumer to any reporting or consumer reporting agency if, one, the person has been notified by the consumer, which you have done in this letter, at the address specified by the person for such notice that specific information is inaccurate. And two, the information is in fact inaccurate. In conclusion, I have shown you and you have been put on notice that you are reporting inaccurate information. The information is in fact inaccurate. The continued reporting of this information or inaccurate information is a clear violation of the law 15 U.S.C. 1681 S2 of your responsibilities as a furnisher of information. You have caused me and my family severe harm due to your negligence and inaccurate reporting. This is a final opportunity to cure and delete this erroneous inaccurate account from my consumer report. You have 10 calendar days, not 10 business days, but a calendar day is the days that are on the calendar to delete this account from my consumer report, or I will take legal action for a consumer violation under 15 U.S.C. 1681 N, 15 U.S.C. 1681 O, and 15 U.S.C. 16. 92k. So what we're going to do here is we're going to mark this so I can keep my place and then we're going to go look at each one of these laws. These laws are simple but if you don't know them then you don't know them and they can be detrimental to Fifteen U.S.C. Section sixteen eighty one N. Civil liability for willful non-compliance. Eight. In general, a person who willfully fails to comply with any requirement imposed under this subchapter with respect to any consumer is liable to that consumer in an amount equal to the sum of one. Eight. Any actual damages sustained by the consumer as a result of the failure of damages of not less than a hundred dollars and not more than a thousand or B in case of liability of a natural person for obtaining a consumer report under false pretenses or knowingly without a permissible purpose actual damages sustained by the consumer as a result of the failure or a thousand dollars whichever is greater two such amounts of punitive damages as the courts may allow. And three, in the case of any successful action to enforce any liability under this section, the cost of the action together with reasonable attorney fees as determined by the court. So here are some of the penalties for the debt collector being non-compliant. The first one is in A, any actual damage. So if they put something, they have this collection on your consumer report. When you apply for credit and you're turned down, you must get the notice 
of why they turned you down. This is called adverse effect. Once you have that notice or that letter, that is like stacking the deck. Once you go to arbitration or court, or if you need, if needed, uh, you have actual proof that you have been damaged. That's what's meant by in one A, any actual damages sustained by the consumer as a result of the failure of the, con the um, debt collectors not following Regulation F. And B, case of liability of a natural person, again, we're talking about uh, without permissible purpose. They're putting this on your uh, credit report, your consumer report, and they don't have permission from you. That's what permissible purpose is. This is, again, at least a thousand dollars. And also, they got to pay that high expense of your attorney. So is it worth it? I don't think so. So the next one is O. Let's go to O. 15 U.S.C. Section 1681-O. Civil liability for negligent non-compliance. A. In general, any person who is negligent in failing to comply with any requirement imposed under this subchapter with respect to any consumer is liable to that consumer in an amount equal to the sum of one, any actual damages sustained by the consumer as a result of the failure. So what we're talking about here again is what did the consumer lose? So you applied for a more and this collection pops up and you could not get the mortgage. Well, the mortgage company has to give you a reason why that you were denied that credit. That reason should be in writing, not verbally, not over the phone, not face to face, but in writing. This is what you're going to use again to use as a hammer to go against the debt collector. I'm pretty sure they're going to back down before you get to this point, but at least this is there in case you need plan B and C. Again, that's actual damages. Number two, in the case of any successful action to enforce any liability under this section, the cost of the action together with reasonable attorney fees is determined by the courts. Again, they have to pay attorney fees. They're not going to continue to do this. They're going to look at this. They've got good common sense. And they're going to back down. So now let's go to the third one. 15 U.S.C. 1692K. Here's the third hammer that falls on the debt collector's head. Let's go see what this says. 15 U.S.C. Section 1692K, Civil Liability. A. Amount of damage, except as otherwise provided by this section. Any debt collector who fails to comply with any provision of this subject with respect to any person is liable to such person in an amount equal to the sum of, one, any actual damages sustained by such person as a result of such failure. Again, we're dealing with actual damage whether you've got a house, uh, some product, or a car. If you get denied, you get the denial letter, which is an adverse, effect, uh, adverse letter. And this is your proof that because of the collection, you were denied this and the collection should not have been there because they didn't follow Regulation Z. Two, A, in the case of any action by an individual, such additional damages as the court may allow but not exceeding $1,000. So you get $1,000 when you win. B, in the case of a class action, well, we're gonna skip that. We're not interested in class action. So there is some more in this and you can just go on and read so that you're thoroughly um, aware of what's going on before uh, to save time, I'm not going to go over all of that. 
but we will go to the next part of this letter. Delete the following account from your records in all consumer reporting agencies. And then you have the account name, the account number. And then toward the end of the letter, we have this. Failure to respond satisfactorily with deletion of the above reference account and send out a free copy of my report after the changes have been made will result in legal actions being taken against your company for which I will also be seeking $1,000 per violation for one, defamation of character per se, two, negligent enablement of identity fraud, three, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, 15 U.S.C. Section 1692G, violation, we went over that, and four, Fair Credit Reporting Act, 15 U.S.C. Section 1681 violation for willful non-compliance. Section 616, civil liability for willful non-compliance. And 15 U.S.C. Section 1681N. Thank you. And then you put your name there. You don't have to uh, handwrite it in. You can just type it. Now this debt validation letter can be sent by anyone, but if you want us to repair, rebuild, restore, and redeem your credit, contact us at Dwayne, that's D-U-A-I-N-E, at dmsinc.ltd, or visit our website at dmsinc.ltd, or call us at 1-800-467-1650. And let's go.